Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus, and today we're in Exodus 22, verse 19. We'll just take verse 19, and some might say, oh, that's a pretty rough verse. Well, what does it say? Whoever lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. So there are three in a row here. This is the second of the three that we're looking at the next day or two. Uh, all these are different parts in the Bible. They're described as abominations. And this second one, for a human person to have sex, a sexual event with an animal. This is an abomination. And here we have a death penalty, capital punishment, if you do such a thing. Hmm. What can we make of this? Well, number one, having sex with an animal is a diminution of human uh, dignity. Remember that in Genesis 2, God brings all the different animals before Adam and he names them, but it says there was not a helper found appropriate for him. So it wasn't appropriate for Adam to say, well, boy, that's, that is a really, that's a beautiful chipmunk. It's just so nice. It's just, I like the colors, nice stripes. Will you marry me? That wasn't the plan. Okay, so the chipmunk wasn't appropriate for Adam. But finally, what God did, you remember the story, right? Genesis 2, it's one of the most beautiful pieces in the Bible. God takes the man, he puts him asleep, and he takes a rib from his side, he takes a piece of the man, and he builds it up, it says literally in the Hebrew, he builds it up into a woman, and he brings her to the man, and he says, you're bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, you know, you are my going to be my wife. So that's how God brings together, not from a chipmunk or a puma or a leopard or a cat, uh, not a parrot, God brings to a human person, a human companion. Interesting today, out in the world, we have a lot of non-human companions. And, you know, we love our little dogs and cats and different pets. But, you know, a lot of us really should be giving our affection back and forth to another human person first. Um, anyway, sideline there. Let's not go off on that. So which one of the Ten Commandments do you think this maybe is an expansion on? Well, we could be talking here about the commandment, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is the marriage covenant. If you violate that covenant, it's adultery. And so that covenant has to be kept right. Uh, you can't intervene. And I believe that any homosexual sin acts intervening into the marriage covenant between a man and a woman, uh, those are violations of the covenant. And so would be uh, to have a sexual relations with an animal. But it's not only that commandment, but the fourth commandment, actually. In the fourth commandment, God's creation order is put there. It says God made everything. Uh, he made it, and then he called, commanded man to rest in s seventh day. But he made the other creation in the six days before that. That creation included, on, on day six, that included the creation of man and woman. And so, again, we have God's created order. But if a, a person, a human person, has sex with an animal, that is a lowering of their dignity. You know, you don't marry a grape and you don't marry a gazelle. Uh, you have to marry one of your own kind. That's the way God designed it. Everything else is, a, is a, a lowering of the human plan that God has made. God has created the seventh day Sabbath. It's a day that a unit of time, a day that is holy. And the other thing that's holy that comes to us from the sinless world before sin entered was the marriage covenant. Marriage between a man and a woman is holy. So any any adjustment to this is an attack on God's plan for humanity. In Romans chapter 1, Paul warns that anyone who turns away from God's creation plan, uh, they begin, when they turn away from the creator, they always begin to worship the creature. And then it goes on to say, if you further in chapter 1, near the end of the chapter, that this is, this is just thoroughly wrong. They turn, one of the things that can happen is right there in the chapter, people can turn to same-sex sin. And in verse 25, Paul wrote, wrote this, They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. And he finally says at verse 32, listen to this, Although they knew the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. So this is talking about homosexuality. Um, death is the uh, suitable thing for that, which God would inflict ultimately, because it's sin. The wages of sin is death. This isn't anything new. This isn't anything unbiblical or unchristian. This has been our teaching for thousands of years. Uh, and bestiality is a step lower than homosexuality. It really is a grotesque a diminution of human dignity. We don't have sex with animals. Death penalty in Exodus, death penalty in uh, Romans chapter 1. So now in Romans 1, in our time, in our day, we're not under a theocracy in the same sense that they were in the wilderness in Exodus. So uh, 
and thankfully so, because you'd want to have really seriously good leaders to implement this stuff. And I'm not sure we've got those kind of leaders like we would like to have. But anyway, not really a big surprise as we look at this. Uh, just, just God is just being straight up with us. He's telling us the truth. This is not something that's meant for us. Thank you, God.